I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Leviticus, chapter 20. Let's focus on verses 23 and 24. You must not follow the statutes of the nations I am driving out before you, for they did all of these things, and I abhorred them. And I promise you, you will inherit their land, since I will give it to you to possess, a land flowing with milk and honey. And I am the Lord your God, who set you apart from the peoples. Now here's a joke for you. What did the fool say right before he died? Hey guys, watch this. (laughs) What did his best friend say just before he died? Oh, I could have done that. You know, it's been said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Doesn't that sound like us? The Lord saves people. And yet many folks turn back and begin sinning in the same ways they did before they were saved. It is as if they are repeating those sins, hoping they will somehow lead to fulfillment instead of disappointment. God informed Israel that he was going to deliver them into Canaan, and he told them how he would drive out the Canaanites. He also told Israel why the Canaanites were being driven out. It was because of their sinful ways. And that information alone should have been enough to teach Israel to honor the Lord, ensuring their perpetual possession of the promised land. That's not easy to say. God went further and he instructed the Israelites to separate themselves from the ways and the beliefs of the Canaanites. It's not that God hates Canaanites and he loves Israelites. He hates fake gods because there's only one God. It was that that he was punishing. It's not that a Canaanite couldn't be saved. If they would turn back to the Lord, they would be saved. As a matter of fact, there's a girl who was in the line of the Messiah named Tamar. She was married to Judah. She was a Canaanite, and yet she believed in God and was included in the people of Israel. So why would Israel turn from the ways of Canaan's, uh, why would they turn to the ways of Canaan's former inhabitants? Well, perhaps it's because of their concept of blessing. Perhaps they got into the land and conditions were harder than Israel thought they might be. And this may have been the case because God informed the children of Israel that the promised land would be flowing with milk and honey. Now, I have four children, and I'm aware of the fact that milk does not flow from a mother until after a painful delivery of a baby. And I've also seen how honey is harvested, having to contend with nagging and stinging bees. And could it be that God was telling Israel that Canaan would be fruitful? but that cultivating that fruit would involve nagging, stinging, and painful work. And doesn't that remind you of the joy that we receive after we employ the discipline of living holy and separate lives unto God in our generation? You see, discipline is what being a disciple is all about. A disciple is a person who's disciplined to something, by something, and for something. So disciples of Christ are people who were disciplined to the word of the Lord by the Holy Spirit and for the purpose of knowing God and making him known. And it seems fruitless if we lose sight of that goal, of our labor, of our discipline. We are called to honor the Lord, longing to enter into the place that he has prepared for us, receiving his great Well done. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare that place, I will surely come back and receive you so that where I am, you will be also. Are you certain that you're going to heaven when you die? If you're not, well, then maybe you want to check out the gospel one more time. You can find it on our website, groundworksministries.com. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. As I said, check us out at groundworksministries.com.